Hi, and welcome to this mini crash course on the command line. I'm so happy you didn't skip this video because the command line is such an important tool in every programmer's life. Now, this video here will be Linux centered, but if you're on macOS, everything will look kind of similar. And nowadays, even Windows users have access to the Linux command line. So how can we get there? We reach the command line by opening a terminal. And this step will depend on the operating system you're using. I'm using Ubuntu and here I can right click inside a folder and choose open a terminal. The command line interface will typically look something like this. We have a prompt that starts with our username followed by an add symbol and the name of the machine we're working on. In my case, I have called my machine laptop. And as you know, my name is Alex. After this piece of information, we see the path to the current working directory, where directory is just another word for folder. So the current working directory is just the folder that we are currently in. The path can be read like this. The last part of the path is the name of the current working directory. And the name before that belongs to the parent folder. So we're in a directory called folder and this directory is located in a folder called outer folder. So we could also say that outer folder is the parent directory of folder. Furthermore, we see that outer folder is located in a special directory represented by a tilde. This tilde stands for a user's home directory. Okay, so in the command line interface, paths to directories are represented as a series of directory names separated by slashes. Paths to a file are represented the very same way, just that the last piece is now the file name. Now we know that the path in the prompt shows us the current working directory and here it's the folder from which we started our terminal. But so far we have no idea what other directories and files are contained in this directory. To see that we have to ask for it by entering a command. And whenever we see a prompt we know that the command line is ready to take a command. Let's enter the command ls which shows us the files and directories that are contained in our current working directory. In this example here, it'll show that there is something called inner folder and something called readme. But how do we know whether these things are files or directories? We can find out by adding a so-called option to the command. Options change a command's behavior and by adding the dash L option to the ls command, we can make it output the information we need and actually much, much more. The information, whether something is a file or a directory, is in this column. A D indicates that the corresponding entry in the list is a directory. So we know that inner folder is a directory, whereas readme is a file. To change our working directory and go into the inner folder directory, we can call the command cd, which stands for change directory. We need to give this command the path to the directory we want to go into. The path of inner folder is the path to the current folder plus the name of the inner folder. And as we know by now, these two parts of the path are separated by a slash. We run this command by hitting enter. And now the prompt shows us that we really changed the directory. Great. Now, the Linux command line interface actually allows us to change directories much more easily. To see that, let's go back to our first folder using cd again. Now we will change to inner folder without typing the whole path. Instead of typing the path to the current folder, we may simply type a dot. Dot means nothing else than the current working directory. Moreover, the command line offers a very convenient way to change to the parent directory. We can do this by typing dot twice. 
paths starting with a dot or two dots are called relative paths. Their meaning depends on what our current working directory is. The prompt, on the other hand, always shows us an absolute path. That is one that has no dots in it. Okay, I think that's enough for now. We have gotten acquainted with the command line and now we know how to navigate our file system using the commands ls and cd. If you want to learn more about the Linux command line interface, I will link an awesome resource in the description, which is also free. Now we're in hacker mode. Joking aside, I think we are now really well equipped for a next step, which will be how to write our C programs, how to translate them into machine code using the command line, and how to finally run the programs we wrote in the command line. You will see all of this in the next video, and I hope you will join me there. See you then.